Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another Fallout 4 Mods Weekly, the show where we take a look at some cool and interesting mods that have come out in the past week for Fallout 4. Now, I know we are a day late, but we still need to talk about all of the really cool mods that came out last week. And we're going to get started with one that I think you guys are going to like a lot. So without further ado, let's check out the Institute Weapons Debulked mod by Mikalov. This is going to be an attempt to overhaul the look of the Institute weapons in the base game to make them look a little bit more reasonable. The vanilla Institute weapons are just gigantic. They're huge and boxy, and personally, I don't mind the boxy design of them, but they are honestly just way too big. They're gigantic, they're oversized, and they take up a ton of your screen. There was already an excellent mod that lowered the position of them in the camera and didn't actually change the weapon itself, but combine that with this new Institute weapons debulked mod, and you're going to get a much smaller profile for these weapons. And all of these new remeshes aren't just applied to the main body of the weapon, but a lot of the attachments as well. So all of the barrels have been shrunk down, made skinnier and shorter and just lighter looking in general, as well as the muzzle devices appear to be smaller and a lot of the sights have actually been changed as well, not only changing their scale but also changing their design. For example, the reflex sight for the Institute now has a new unique hexagonal shape compared to the traditional square style vanilla laser reflex sight. And there's also a change to the thermal scope or the recon scope that makes it Totally different, and honestly, it looks really, really cool. The best part about this mod is that it does use all vanilla assets, so whenever you use any retextures, for example, in this video, I'm using a black retexture of the Institute weapons, it just works. These are just rescaled versions of the vanilla pieces, so any retexture you use at all is going to work just fine, which is really, really cool. Combining this rescale mod with any sort of Institute armor overhaul is going to make the Institute into a pretty sizable faction that actually seem like they might have some military prowess, unlike the vanilla game where it's just a bunch of scientists holding cereal boxes. This mod's really, really cool and it's excellent work by Mikolov. Can't wait to see what else you remesh in the future. Up next, we have a new HUD mod, and that is the Fallout New Vegas HUD by M8R98A4F2. This mod is going to completely overhaul the HUD to make it look just like it did in New Vegas. Now, this may look an awful lot like the Fallout 3 HUD we covered not that long ago, and that's because it's made by the exact same author, and honestly, they're not too different. The biggest difference with the Fallout New Vegas HUD is going to be the reticle. This is going to come with a brand new update to the Fall UI HUD mod, also by the same author, and this is going to allow some cool custom reticles, and the New Vegas reticle is really, really neat. I've been looking and looking for a mod that would add this back, and finally, we have one. What I find really interesting about this too is whenever you equip a weapon, you're still going to keep that same arrow style reticle, but it's going to change the scale based on the hipfire accuracy of the weapon you're using. Now, some people may like this, some people may not. Regardless, it's a really cool and unique idea by the author, and one that I think fits really, really well in the gameplay style of Fallout 4. I think this mod does a great job of combining the classic elements from Fallout New Vegas with the new gameplay of Fallout 4 into one cohesive HUD. This is a truly excellent mod, and if you're looking for a bit more of a classic feel for your game, I highly, highly recommend this one. Alrighty, the next mod we're checking out is known as Fatigue Enhanced Combat Realism by ZZYXZZ, and we're going to talk about this one live as it's pretty intricate as to what's going on here. So you'll notice that I do have a full AP bar, and the AP bar is not only used for VATS in this game, but stamina as well. And this mod is going to add fatigue when you aim down sights. So as you hold your weapon up to aim, it's actually going to drag down your AP pool, making it harder to run away from combat. And also it will make your weapon wobble a little bit whenever it drains the AP fully. Now, this is a very, very customizable mod. You can change the drain rate for pistols, rifles, laser weapons, everything is super, super customizable thanks to a very, very intuitive MCM menu. So if we head over to the newly added fatigue menu, you can see that we can A, turn the whole system on or off at a whim. We have the wobble settings. These are going to change the minimum wobble strength and then the maximum strength for the pistols, rifles, heavy guns, and other. So if you want pistols to wobble more or less than rifles, you can change that here very, very easily. You can change the AP drain settings, so which ones are going to drain faster. It, my typical go-to is the bigger the weapon is, the faster your AP is going to drain when using it. Additionally, you can make it so that whenever you shoot, it drains even more AP because it's going to be a little bit of a kick to your shoulder or wrist, depending on which weapon you're using. You can also reduce the amount of wobble if you're in power armor, giving a new reason to use power armor, which is really, really cool. So you're no longer going to have that severe wobble or recoil. 
And then there are a couple of other stat settings that you can change down at the bottom as well. So that's pretty, pretty neat. But we'll go ahead and show this off just a little bit more. As we saw, whenever I hold up the weapon, it does drain the AP pretty quick. But if we shoot, it goes even faster, which is pretty dang neat. And I do have it set up a little bit higher than the vanilla settings just to really show it off in the mod review. But also, if we switch to a rifle, you'll see that it drains much, much faster. Now, this is a bit extreme. This is not at all how the mod comes stock. But I again, I ramped it up just so you could really really see how it works. Definitely a super cool mod to amp up some of the realism in gunfights. Definitely feels like a Tarkov type thing because I do believe Tarkov has some recoil or weapon holding type stamina that's separate from your regular sprint stamina. So that's pretty interesting. I would love to see this be separate from your typical stamina pool because I don't see how running and holding your weapon up come from the same pool. But hey, as far as Fallout goes, this is pretty dang advanced and a really, really cool immersion mod. Now the next mod we're checking out is a very, very simple weapon mod known as the Wasteland Thorn by Space Wizard 17 Now this mod is essentially just another version of the Pipe Revolver with some newly added attachments that make it look more like the Thorn weapon from Destiny. So this isn't a ton, it's really just a barrel attachment for the Pipe Revolver, although it is in the form of a standalone weapon. This thing's going to have much higher base damage than the regular Pipe Revolver, almost to a bit of a broken point, but it's going to have some really cool visible attachments as well. The reason I wanted to feature this mod is because I really love the creativity of this. You know that I personally love remaking weapons from other games in the Fallout style, and I think this weapon does it excellently. You can see the features that call back to the classic Thorn mod, but it still looks like the vanilla Fallout 4 pipe revolver. I think it meshes the two designs very, very well, and I really want to promote more ideas like this, and that's why I'm promoting this one now. The only thing really wrong with this mod is the balance. It's a little bit overpowered, but that's a really easy thing to fix in the CK or Fallout 4 edit. Personally, I just really like the Raider style design of this. It looks like something that would exist in Fallout already, and I just wanted to give some props to the creator for having a really cool, unique idea. Up next, we have a new set of weapons known as the Chinese Officer Katana by Mikolov. Now, this mod has actually undergone some updates that make the title a bit outdated, but what you're going to get in this mod is a replacer for the Chinese officer sword in the vanilla game. Now there are a handful of options for you to install based on your preferences. There is a replacer of this that's going to make the Chinese officer sword look more like a Chinese Dao, so an alternative Chinese weapon, which is still pretty lore friendly. But there's also a version that will approach sort of a katana style look. But now, instead of just a replacer, you can also download the katana as a standalone weapon that will rename it to the Japanese Officer Sword. So now, in the game, you'll be able to find both the Chinese and Japanese Officer Swords. You can actually download both versions of this mod on the same file page, and you'll be able to have two cool new weapons. One is just going to be a reskin, and the other is going to be a completely standalone new sword. Which is really cool, because I think the melee weapon representation on the Nexus is a bit lacking at the moment. So having some cool, new, lore-friendly melee weapons is pretty sweet. Functionally, the stats of these are going to be identical to the Chinese Officer Sword. There's no changes there. Whether you get the standalone or the replacer version, the stats are all going to be the same, and they're going to come with the same attachments. The serrated attachments, the electrified attachments, that's all still there, which is really cool, and they're all going to have their own unique meshes. I really, really like this. Really cool stuff by Mikolov. I gotta say, I like this one quite a bit. And finally, we're going to have a little spooky mod known as the Halloween Creature Editions by Elha, otherwise known as Zorkaz. This mod is going to add a bunch of new creatures with unique traits and unique locations all over the Commonwealth. So let's go ahead and get into exactly what you're going to get when you download this mod. The first of the new creatures is the Protectron Ghost. This is going to be a ghost of a Protectron. It can be found in subways and it has some very unique combat traits. What makes these guys special is that they cannot be damaged by normal means. If you shoot them with your gun, nothing's going to happen. You have to kill them with energy explosions like a plasma grenade or a pulse grenade, which is pretty cool. And whenever you hit them with one, they won't actually die. They're just going to shut down. You have to go and activate them and give them a subway token, and then they will disappear. The next creature added in this mod is the Possessed Synth. These guys are pretty much identical to the regular synths in the vanilla game. However, they do have one unique caveat, and that is that they will spawn anywhere. They will find you. As you travel through the Commonwealth, these guys will stalk you and appear out of nowhere. So that's pretty dang interesting. With this mod installed, there truly is nowhere to hide as these synths will follow you everywhere. The next creature added in this mod is the Hellhound, which is going to be a pretty much vanilla mongrel, except it's going to be completely covered in fire 
all the time, and it's going to have a cool, glowing, charred look when you get up close. These guys can be found anywhere near gravestones, so if you head over to a cemetery, you may find one of these guys, and they have really high resistance to fire and energy weapons, and when you kill them, they will explode. The next NPC added in this mod is the Tax Collector. This may not seem very Halloween themed, but let me tell you, there's nothing scarier than an immortal tax collector who's been looking for you for over 200 years. If you want to find one of these guys, they actually travel from bank to bank in game. So find any two banks and follow the path between them and you may find a tax collector. And the coolest thing about them is that when they attack you, it actually doesn't do a lot of damage to you at all. It takes money directly from your inventory that just goes into the ether. Whenever you kill them, you can't actually loot the money so you really want to avoid being hit that being said they're pretty weak and pretty easy to kill so just avoid being hit and you'll be fine the next npc is known as a treater the kids who are out there hunting for candy except these guys are a bit more violent than your typical trick-or-treaters these kids can be found in the city so when you head to diamond city be careful you may actually find some hostile enemies and you can't actually defeat these guys. You need to give them candy in order to calm them. But there is a chance that they'll actually take your side in combat after you have given them some candy. So that's pretty neat. But where do you get this candy? Well, that is where the Super Pumpkin Behemoth comes in. This is not in any specified location. They are hand placed in a bunch of random locations all over the world. So just keep your eye out for a giant orange creature. This guy will throw pumpkins at you, which is a pretty interesting combat mechanic, and whenever you kill them, they will explode into piles of candy, and then you can use said candy to trade with the trick-or-treaters. And the final enemy added in this mod is the Polter Ghoul. And what you're seeing on screen is not a joke. These guys are completely invisible, so watch out for them. If you want to find one of these guys or you want to avoid them at all costs, they can be found exclusively in the swamplands in the south of the map. And when I say these guys are invisible, I really mean it. Even after you kill them, it's not like a stealth boy. Their body stays invisible as well, so you're really going to have to look for them if you want to loot them. And that covers pretty much all of the enemies added in this mod. They are pretty crazy. Most of them are goofy and nowhere near lore friendly, but they're a lot of fun if you're looking for something goofy to install for the Halloween season. I know we're a day late for Halloween, but it's still that time of year, and you could always download this one in preparation for next year. With that, I think we're going to wrap things up. I hope you guys found at least one mod in this list that you want to throw into your load order. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a rating and consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this. Big shout out to all of my patrons and a special thank you to Captain Chaos, Helljumper, Indecisive Wolf, Jackie Noid, Timmy76, John Moreland, Cushy58, Logan Rigmaiden, Mike Erhan, Moonlit Gamer, Feed, and Youth RC for joining that tier 3 Patreon membership. If you'd like to support the channel or the mods I work on over on Patreon, you can do so using the link down in the description below. But it's completely optional. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace.